Good afternoon. Welcome to today's presentation, NPL at Home, the Newark School Photo Collection. I'm Tom Ankner, Director of the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center at the Newark Public Library. Before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out your census forms. Filling out the census is one small but very important thing everyone can do right now to help our city and our communities. If you haven't done so yet, please go to my2020census.gov and fill out the brief questionnaire. The information you provide affects funding for healthcare, transportation, your local schools, and many other needs. Remember, my2020census.gov. It is safe, secure, and confidential. Today, I will be showing you a unique collection of photos that we have in the New Jersey room at the Newark Public Library. The Newark School Photo Collection is a group of more than 5,400 photos taken during the 20th century, mostly between the 1940s and the 1960s. They were taken by photographers employed by the city's school system. Because the photographers were paid by the schools, most of the photos have a staged quality to them. They attempt to portray the schools in a positive light, positive in terms of the work being done, in the relationships between the students, and in the range of activities portrayed. But they are still an interesting artifact of the Newark Public Schools during a certain period of their history, the mid 20th century. A few years ago, the Newark Public Library digitized this entire collection. It is now available free of charge at digital.npl.org, the home of the library's digital collections. I just want to begin by showing you how to get to the digital collections. And if anyone has any questions during my presentation, type them in the chat box. Okay, thank you. So now I just want to uh, share my screen with you all. Uh, just one minute show you how to get to the digital collections, which are at digital.npl.org. And that is the screen that you are now seeing. Um, that is now the screen that you, that is the screen that you are now seeing. You are now seeing the main digital.npl.org, which is the main screen of the uh, digital uh, collections of the Newark Public Library. To get to the school photo collection, you click on NPL collections and you wait, it's sometimes kind of slow, okay? And then there are three different entities here. Um, the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center, where I work, is the first one. Those are collections from the New, that's the New Jersey room, and these are collections from the New Jersey room. Then there is the second link is to the New Jersey Hispanic Research and Information Center, which is another department in the library, and that the, their collections will be at that link. And the Special Collections Department, which is our um, rare books and fine art collection, uh, collections we've digitized uh, in that area of the library will be at that link. So the school photos collection is in the uh, New Jersey room. So we click on Charles F. Cummings, New Jersey Information Center. And then we go down the list. The, uh, the collections are arranged alphabetically. So we go down the list. Um, the, um, so it goes until New York High Schools is at the bottom of, this, of the first page. I believe the school photo collection is on the third page. So I'll click on three. And then we go down to, um, Oh, I might have been, I'm sorry, might have been the second page. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yes, so the um, Newark School Photo Collections. Yes, they're it's under N, not S. Okay. Um, yeah, here it is. The Newark School Photograph Collection. So we click on that. And that you will get, you will come up to the main page of the collection. And you can sort it by title. Um, the last modification date, relevance, or date created. Um, I'm not gonna do any of that today. I just wanted to show you how to get to it because I've actually prepared a PowerPoint with some of the photos I wanna to show to you. So I'm not gonna be showing you from this site. I'll be showing you from my, from my PowerPoint. I just wanted to show you how to get to the school photo collection. Um, also, this, um, this platform that you're looking at is the new platform for us that we're in the process of implementing. Uh, we're switching from one platform to another. So not everything will be here yet. This is um, still being worked on. It will be a few months yet before this will be complete. Uh, so anyway, that is how to get to the um, school photo collection on the digital archive. And the, the main address is digital.npl.org. Okay, so now I'm going to bring you to my PowerPoint, which is a different place. Um, so there, I'm going to, okay. So this is the presentation that I put together to show you the, um, 
the school photo collection. This is the flyer that we did for today's program, NPL at Home, Newark School Photo Collection. Okay, so I want to begin with, okay, why is this not? Okay, just a minute, let me go back to, okay. There we go. I don't know why that didn't work. Anyway, so this is the this is the flyer we put together. Um, there are a number of there are um, a number of different kinds of photos in the school photo collection. They are all black and white, uh, and they are um, as I said, most all from the 20th century, mostly from the 1940s through the 1960s. Uh, although there are some earlier photos, and I do share some of them in this presentation. First of all, I want to show you some pictures of some classrooms. And I did begin with some earlier classrooms I wanted to show you from the beginning. This is a picture of a Madison School classroom from 1919. Um, I'm guessing that this was kind of the standard um, school, uh, school classroom of that era. Not really that much different than school classrooms today. Maybe the desks are a little, desks aren't wooden, desks look a little different. Um, and the lights are a little different. Um, I'm not sure they have chalkboards or whiteboards in classrooms now, but it's essentially the same concept. This is what a classroom would have looked like in 1919. Um, this is a, an interesting photo. I thought it's a public school clinic, Ex exercises for correction of physical defects. And I don't quite know what they mean by physical defects. There's not a lot of description on a lot of these um, photo, uh, on a lot of these photos, but it um, looks like they're doing exercises maybe um, you know, back problems or some other thing. Looks like it looks like the kids are not handicapped, but they maybe have some um, problems, uh, some physical problems that they need correcting. And this is they're laying on the floor on mats and and um, towels over the mats and doing um, exercises. This was an undated photo, but it looks to me like the early 20th century, probably around 1920 or a little before 1920, maybe. This is a picture from 1914, the Washington Street School class for blind and visually impaired children. Again, a typical classroom. You can't really tell this by just looking at the children, but it's interesting that they were offering these kinds of classes that early in 1914. Uh, this is an Americanization class for foreign born students. Again, on dated, but early 20th century. Um, what's interesting to me about this photo is that there is a mix of children and adults in this class. You can see it's being offered at night. There's darkness outside of the windows. Um, and apparently both children and, and their parents or grandparents, you know, children and adults who were born not in the United States were, uh, were put in these Americanization classes. And I don't know what they mean by Americanization, whether it's just teaching them English or whether it's some other, something else um, involved in Americanization to be teaching about American culture. <clears throat> Perhaps, it's just a thought. I'm, I don't really know what Americanization means. Um, these are special needs children at the Belmont Avenue School in 1923. <clears throat> now, um, I, I, now, you see a couple of the kids are in wheelchairs. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. A couple of the kids are in wheelchairs. Uh, this is a classroom at the uh, Waverly Avenue School in 1923, the Florence Nightingale Health Club. <clears throat> excuse me. Just a minute. Okay, sorry about that. This is a, a Florence Ab Nightingale Health Club. I don't know. I don't quite know what this is. Whether this is a like a young nurses of America type type of class, or whether this is something else. But there is a um, a girl here with a um, there's a sign on her uh, desk saying Vice President. So it's some kind of club named after Florence Nightingale. Now this is a, a classroom at the Morton Street School in 1942. This is a victory scrapbook. Uh, now, of course, this was during the war, during World War II, and the girls all have um, hats on. Um, something about um, maybe um, doing some work for victory in the war, raising money for the war effort or something. That's what they are doing here. Uh, this we jump ahead um, a little bit more. Uh, we play at high school in 1948, Mr. Lewin's class. Um, now, it's, it was described in the metadata as Mr. Lewin's class, but there is an older woman standing here. I don't know who she is. She, to me, looks like a teacher, so she doesn't, she doesn't look like Mr. Lewin to me. And I don't know. I didn't know Mr. Lewin, but I don't think Mr. Lewin came to class in drag, so I don't think that's Mr. Lewin. But that's how the, the class was described in the metadata. 
Uh, this is another classroom at Weequay High School from 1948, a German class. Uh, we know that because of, there were some German vocabulary words and some German grammar on the uh, chalkboard in the background. These are two boys putting on some kind of uh, reenactment. This is from Weequay High School in 1948. This is an adult education class from 1950. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I think they, I think the Newark schools had a pretty extensive adult education program through the mid 20th century. This is a Central High School classroom from 1952. They're looking at a, a film, a, um, a film strip, some kind of film. There's a film projector there, and uh, the kids all sitting in rows, looking at toward, I guess, a screen at the front of the classroom. This is a, um, a, pic, a photo. High School in 1953, Endless Possibilities on the Mimeo. I'm guessing that means a mimeograph machine, which was like an early version of a photocopier. Um, I can remember going to school in the 1970s, we had what was called a ditto machine at the time, which involved uh, carbon paper and a roller. Uh, this, I think, was an earlier version of the same sort of thing. Um, this is a first grade classroom from the Dayton Street School in 1953. The children are learning simple words. Ran, run, big, block, want. Uh, kids and the teacher is pointing at the chalkboard. This is uh, Clinton Place Junior High School in 1958. They took a series of photos of Clinton Place Junior High School in 1958. I think it must have been a new school at the time. If you look at if you look at the uh, classroom, it's a more modern classroom than some of the earlier photos we've seen. And I, my guess is Clinton Place Junior High was built that year. And so they took a bunch of photos showing off this new, you know, shiny school they just built. This is another junior high school class from 1960. The, the school in this photo is not identified in the metadata. So those are the classroom, some of the classroom photos. We have many more are available. As I said, there are more than 5,000 photos in this collection, so I can't show you all of the photos here. I'm just doing a selection of photos. There are also some cafeterias and libraries depicted in the collection. This is a very busy cafeteria picture from the Ann Street School in 1945. You see the kids eating lunch at the tables, and there are these um, girls in the background dressed in some kind of uniform. I guess they were working as aides to the cafeteria ladies. <clears throat> That's what I'm guessing. Uh, this is a Lafayette Street school uh, described as a cafeteria in the metadata, also from 1945. To me, it looks like they're eating in the classroom now. It doesn't really look like a class. It doesn't really look like a cafeteria to me. Maybe in some of the schools, the kids ate in the classrooms. This is a um, Wequaic High School cafeteria photo from 1945 showing the lunch ladies preparing the lunches in the kitchen. Um, this is a Board of Education dinner that took place at Central High School in 1947. Um, you see the, the members of the board and maybe their guests sitting around a wide table. This is another uh, photo from that series that Clinton Place Junior High School in 1958 showing, I guess, a modern type of cafeteria. Two boys eating lunch, one in a Boy Scout uniform. Um, now these, these, are, these are some libraries that they're going to show. This is an early uh, library photo. Boys Continuation School Library from 1927. Uh, see the boys mostly sitting around, all in ties, mostly in ties. Um, okay, that's from 1927. Uh, this is a Southside High School Library photo in 1941. The person at the desk is described in the metadata as a girl. I think she's a librarian or a teacher, though. She doesn't look like... She doesn't need to look young enough to be in high school, but I might be wrong. Uh, this is a picture from the Chancellor Avenue School Library in 1944. This is a, a picture from the Burnett Street School Library uh, taken in front of the fireplace in 1949. Again, from another picture from the Clinton Place Junior High School Library from 1958. You know, kind of modern library, not that much different than what you'd see in a school today. I wouldn't think, except that there are no computers. So the one really noteworthy difference. So there's also some photos on uh, just uh, Oh, okay. Somebody, um, Mr. Singer, you're saying you att you attended Clinton Place Junior High when it first first opened. So it was actually about a year. Uh, so it was actually about a year old when those pictures were taken. 
That's interesting. Okay. So that now we actually do know there was a kind of a new school at the time that those photos were taken. So here are some photos of sports and physical education. Sorry. I think I have to start my share up again. There we go. Okay. Oh, I don't know why that's happening. Sorry, just a minute. Something for somebody, my, my screen froze. Just one minute, okay. I'm going to have to share this, okay. Ah, okay, there we go. Sports and physical education, okay. Uh, this is a photo that my sister really liked. That's why I included it in here and I also included it on the flyer. This is a picture from the Barringer Gym in the 1940s. I don't know what they're doing. I think that thing is called the Swedish Ladder that they're hanging on. Um, it looks a little scary to me. I'm not sure they do that in gym class today, have kids hang up, upside down. I can see all kinds of injuries and lawsuits that could ensue. Uh, apparently that was something they did in the 1940s though. This is an artificial respiration class at the Wycliffe Street School from 1941. I guess he's reviving or, to, or pretending to revive that kid. Um, this is a judo class from Central High School in 1944. First thing I thought of when I saw this photo is why are there no mats on that floor? <laughs> it looks like kind of dangerous to, if you want to, you know, knocking someone over onto a, a gym floor that uh, you can, kind of injuries uh, could result. Um, this, I, I, I thought this was cool. The East Side High School Commando Education in 1944, there are a whole series of photos that were taken of this commando education program. Uh, you know, this was during the war, maybe they were teaching boys, um, you know, what, what it was like to be in the military or something. I'm not quite sure what was involved in commando education, but there are, um, you know, photos of them running around and hanging off of equipment like this and everything, learning how to be commandos, I guess. Uh, but anyway, if the boys, if the boys were taking commando education, the girls were taking dance class in 1945, 44. This was this was a picture from Barringer High School, a dance class, and there are a bunch of pictures of dance classes, almost all with girls. You know, there was a clear gender division here in the gym classes. You know, the girls did one thing and the boys did another. Um, so the, the girls took a lot of dance classes at the uh, Newark schools in the 40s and 50s. Uh, this is the Swedish ladder again. I, I don't know, I've never heard of a Swedish ladder before, but apparently Barringer High had one. And this is a picture from 1944. And they had a bunch of girls hang from the um, Swedish ladder to kind of highlight exactly what it was. Um, this is a picture from Cleveland Junior High in 1946. Um, they are on a stage, not in a, in a gym. Um, this looks like a stage to me, but I think this was a gym class because they look like they're in gym clothes to me. So I think this was probably taken during a gym class. Maybe the gym was in the, um, maybe the stage was in the gym. It was, you know, it was both a gym and uh, an auditorium. Um, okay, this is a picture from 1951. Woodland Avenue School, uh, there's a baseball group, group of kids, uh, I guess, learning baseball in gym class. And I think this is gym class because the boys mostly have ties on. So I don't think it was after school. It was probably during the school day. Another, um, another uh, picture from Clinton Place Junior High in 1958, that nice modern gym. Um, this was a picture from the Lincoln School, Recreation in 1962. I'm not quite sure what those two boys are doing. The, the, the one is holding the other's feet and the, the other one is, you know, holding his arms up in the air. Uh, some kind of phys, phys ed program. Uh, this is a, uh, another recreation program at Mount Vernon School. Again, you know, the boys did one thing, the girls did another. Um, the girls are learning some kind of dance move, I think. And that's what it looks like to me. Uh, this was a recreation um, picture from the Garfield School in 1962, two, two kids playing checkers. And this is from Clinton Hill Junior High in 1962, uh, boys playing basketball. Okay, so there's also, um, so that's, those are the phys ed and sports pictures. It's also pictures of concerts and plays. Uh, this was a mosque theater concert from 1940 with school children in it. Uh, the mosque theater um, is today known as Symphony Hall. It's on 
Broad Street, just north of Lincoln Park. Yeah, up until the mid 1960s, it was known as the Mosque Theater. This is a photo. This is a photo of a concert that took place there in 1940. Uh, this is an, an operata, operata, operetta. Sorry, at the of the Mikado at Maple Avenue School in 1941. I don't think these people are students. They look like adults to me. Um, it might have been a performance that was being put on for the students. This was a pageant at the 18th Avenue School in 1941. The kids dressed up as various different historical figures, including the Statue of Liberty in the middle. This would have been, you know, right before the beginning of um, our, right before our entry into World War II. So a lot of uh, an emphasis on uh, patriotic themes, perhaps. Um, this is a graduation play. There are a series of photos in this collection of graduation plays. I guess that used to be a common thing done in the schools. This was a graduation play from the Robert Treat School in 1942. These girls in, you know, grass skirts posing inside of a picture frame as if they're in the, uh, uh, somewhere in the tropics. Uh, this is a, um, an all city concert vocal ensemble. I don't know whether this is at Arts High School or whether this group is from Arts High School and they're performing at this all city concert vocal ensemble. It wasn't clear from the metadata, but this is from 1951. Again, another picture from Clinton Place Junior High School in 1958. Kids lined up to perform, to sing, looks like. Uh, this is a Christmas play from the Franklin School in 1960. There's uh, Joseph with his beard and Mary on the, uh, on the burrow. Um, okay, then there are also a series of photos from W from lessons that were broadcast on WATV, which was Channel 13. Today, Channel 13 is WNET, the New York PB, PBS station. But in the 40s and 50s, WATV was located in Newark, and it was in a commercial station owned by Bremer Broadcasting, and it had the call letters WATV, and they offered um, a range of scintillating programming. But among them was uh, were um, uh, programs produced by the Newark Public Schools, uh, lessons and presentations. Um, this is, and I don't know when these were broadcast, whether they were in prime time, whether they were in the morning or the afternoon. This is a photo from one of the broadcasts, uh, Science Lesson Number One from 1951. Um, this is art instruction on WATV in 1957. Uh, this is the All High School Singing Group from 1954, and you see the WATV camera for Channel 13 right there. Uh, this was Spotlight on Mathematics from Wequaic High School in 1956. This was a report to parents, South 8th Street School for 8th grade science in 1951. Um, I don't think any of these broadcasts were actually actually took place in classrooms. I think uh, the station was um, was at the Mosque Theater, you know, what's now Symphony Hall on Broad Street. And they, I think there was probably a studio there where they shot all of these um, programs. Um, this was Geology Junior Museum from 1951. And I believe, and that's it. That's, those are the um, photos that I have to show you today. Uh, wasn't a very long program. I just wanted to give you an example of what was available in the Newark School photos. If you want to, um, you, if you want to reach out to um, us, you can reach us at njreference at npl.org if you have questions about this, or you can just go to digital.npl.org and look at the photos yourself. Um, and I, I see Robert Singer was saying, yes, everything was much new, was new and much nicer than Hawthorne and Braggaw. Uh, I actually went to four different schools in one year without moving. Braggaw, um, Wequake High School Annex in Hawthorne, Clinton um, Middle School, and uh, Wequake High School. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. A lot of changing. Um, oh, the TV station. Okay, well, WATV, um, Bremer Broadcasting owned it when it first went on the air in 1948. Bremer sold it in 1957 to another company. And at that point, um, you know, it eventually became a PBS station, but PBS didn't really come into existence until the late 60s. So, uh, but it became, I think, what was called an educational television station after Bremer sold it. And I forget who they sold it to, but Bremer owned it until 1957. And it was when Bremer owned it that these programs from the, um, from the Newark Public Schools were broadcast.
Yeah. Okay. Somebody uh, was saying that they were at the Columbus School in Newark in 1990. That was much later, of course, than these. Let's see. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. And so if anyone has any questions, they can type it in the uh, they can type them in the chat box. Um, and otherwise, thank you very much for being here. If you want to know about other uh, virtual programs that we have from the Newark Public Library, you can do you can find that out by going to the calendar at. Our web, on our website, npl.org slash calendar. Thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe.